All right, so I'm just going to get started now. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, you could have joined any other workshop, but you joined ours. Uh, we appreciate you for being here. And so we're going to get started with our direct action and mutual aid organizing presentation. There are a few things that I'd like to say. First, this is a guide on how to be politically organized. We're not, for the record, we're not here to indoctrinate you or any sort of thing. We're not going to promote like certain viewpoints or whatever. We're just here to tell you how to politically organize. And through that, you could use it for, you know, hopefully to better your communities. But in the end, the ball would be in your court. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Carlos Rojo. I'm a student at Washington State University. I'm currently a member of the Brown Berets here in Washington State. And we're in association with El Centro de la Raza. Uh, so thank them for uh, inviting us to this uh, conference uh, virtually. A uh, little bit about myself is I'm an activist, I'm an educator, I currently work in retail, but hopefully in the future I hope to be a professor of some sort and, you know, change the world or whatnot. Um, do my other co-hosts like to share or introduce themselves? Okay, um, my name is Samuel Arellano Vega. Um, I am currently attending Everett Community College and uh, I'm working to get my uh, transfer degree first, uh, and then from there earn a bachelor's and then start a business from there. Um, uh, I am also a member of the Brown Berets, um, and I've been knowing Alicia and Carlos for years now. We go back and, um, thank you also for El Centro de la Raza for allowing us this segment. Hey guys, my name is Alicia Revalo. Um, I'm also a student at WSU and I'm studying sociology. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm not proud, I'm not part of the Brown Berets, but like Sam mentioned, I have known them, Carlos and Sam, for a few years. So I've been able to like participate in civic engagement and whatnot. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Adriana, would you like to introduce yourself? Myself. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Adriana Ortiz and I work with El Centro de la Raza. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you all. Um, so real quick, like I said, this is a uh, we're not trying to indoctrinate anyone. This is for political organizing. Little disclaimer, some of this topic, some of these topics can be a little bit intense for people, but hopefully we're able to, you know, move forward and, you know, talk or find comfort in these, this uh, this uncomfortable topics. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please. A little bit of background information. So here we're just gonna define the two words that are basically saying that language is important. So the way we talk about direct action is using your power, whether it's money, uh, your position in terms of what? Uh, in terms of political, uh, terms of political position, or your physical strength uh, to reach goals, in contrast to those that are like in those two that they think they're allowed. So, like for example, um, voting would not be considered direct action because it's in, it's basically what the law and authorities tell you to do to vote. That's how you can voice your opinion. However, if you were to be like, oh, this is unfair, let's take it to the streets in March, that's in contrast to the laws and authorities because they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can voice your concern, it's just not this way, causing a ruckus, what is this, you know? So that's direct action. Uh, mutual aid is the reciprocal exchange of goods and services, acts of kindness, basically. Uh, you got my back, I got yours. That's mutual benefit. Um, it's a form of political participation in which we take care of each other. Uh, we're over here trying to build a better community in a sense, also build the community we want to see. Uh, direct action and mutual aid are intertwined. They can coexist. They, they should coexist. And it's best to, for them to intertwine for, polit for ultimate political power. Um, but first, the beginning steps is to know yourself, help yourself, and improve yourself before you're able to help others. It's similar to how like in planes where they took like the mask drops down, you have to put your mask on before you can help the person next to you. Um, but after that, um, you organize your squad, you educate your squad, then you can agitate the system. So basically how we're going to go through this is 
the beginning steps of any political action is to educate yourself. Then you can organize. Then you can agitate. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so like Carlos mentioned, um, before you're doing anything, you really do want to educate yourself. And especially if you're going out, you know, to the communities and you want to know about local, state and federal laws, um, you want to know your rights, especially with like ICE and police. Um, you just don't want to go out there not knowing because you never know what could happen to you, really. Um, and not just that, but you want to educate others, like the people around you, talk to them, like they'll go ahead and like um, share what they know. And then, you know, by um, talking to them, like that's how you learn. That's how you spread information, especially if it's like information about like ICE and stuff like that. And not just that, um, you also want to know about community agreements. And um, with that, so for those who don't know, um, community agreements are basically like a set of basic, basic ground rules that you want to have in order to um, not, how would you say it? Basically to create an open and inclusive space. So let's say you want to be a part of mutual aid, like you want to know the community um, agreements before you go, because you can't just do anything you want. It's a community-based um how would you say it? I guess, uh-huh, yeah. So yeah, with that. And you also wanna be really respectful going into big groups and communities because everyone should be able to, you know, um, voice their opinions. And then let's see, for theory, like Carlos mentioned, we're not here to, um, to teach you guys about theory or teach you, um, yeah, basically, we're not here to teach you about theory. We're here to tell you that you can um, look these things up, like before doing anything, like take a class, do it, like Google it. Um, like it was mentioned before in a presentation, like we share all these posts, like go ahead and look into it. Like, look, yeah. And then um, another important thing before starting, you really do want to look up the definition of words. There's a lot of like words you're going to hear and that you're not going to understand. So like kind of looking them up before or like even after or, like taking notes and then it really does help. For example, um, looking up like what capital is, capitalism is like we hear that a lot, but sometimes we don't even know what that means or like white supremacy, imperialism and then just stuff like that. Yeah. And then next. Okay. And then this is where um, basically the direct action begins to happen. So you want to start by organizing your community. And um, some of the fundamentals that go into this is um, you have to know that community building is a slow process. It doesn't happen overnight. Like um, kind of like Edwin said, like, uh, you can't expect like 10,000 people from one night to the other to like to follow you, you know, it takes time because you have to first you have to establish yourself. And then basically you have to almost in a sense prove yourself. Right. So it's a slow process, but slow does not mean impossible. You know, um, it's just like anything else. Uh, you start out slow, but you're going to get big if you um, if you keep hard work at it, it'll get to where you need it to go. So um going off of community building uh it's important to let uh people in your community know like what's important to them you know um and then so building off of that listen listen to them uh understand their concerns their needs their interests because all of this is going to help understand or this is all going to help you uh know their political understanding you know what i'm saying like uh after hearing all of the things that they have to say, then you kind of know where where people are, um, in a sense, politically. Uh, and then, so then after that, you want to, you want to ask, what are the changes that you want to see in society? Uh, and then once you get all that feedback, all the changes and all the things that you want, then how are you going to go about achieving it, right? Uh, so then this this helps to clarify like any common goals and interests so that it brings unity rather than uh, 
how would you say it like misunderstandings or things like that you know you want to build off of things that are common everybody has things in common and uh so you want to build off of that and then um so let's see and then so yeah um you just basically want to get those relationships build a community uh and then branch out, have your words be expanded through the network of people that you've just uh, educated or, or taught or talked to, things like that. And then you also want to maintain those relationships because you did get them, but how are you going to keep them and maintain them? And then, uh, you know, to kind of steer that flow and get it started. And then next slide, please. Okay, so um, mutual aid. So for those who maybe forgot, um, mutual aid is basically when um, everyday people get together to meet each other's needs with the shared understanding that um, the system we live in are not meeting our needs. And next. Okay. <clears throat> and then mutual aid, where to start? So you got to look at First, you got to start with like a group of friends, family, organization, anything that that's like a like a group. And then uh, you want to host or participate community events to get to know the people of your community. And, um, you know, that can be done through things like games, things like uh, like just going out for like a walk or something. You know, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It doesn't have to be. It, it could just it could honestly be whatever is comfortable for everybody, because it has to be a space where people are are comfortable enough to, to speak what they think. And then, um, so you wanna build the community uh, that you want to see within your groups because people fall, people uh, do, hold on, I messed up that, that up. But uh, you, you learn from examples, from examples. So if you see people doing something, it's like, oh, they're not, they're not just like talking about it, they're doing something about it. And because something is done, like that, that, uh, that inspires other people to do, uh, and to kind of, you know, uh, assimilate into the, into the things that you're going to, that you're doing. And then community looks out for each other. So basically, um, you help each other out in any way that you can. It could be something like food. It could be shelter. It could be security. Security could be anything from, uh, from the most uh, broadest of examples and have like physical security or just something like a little more tender, like emotional security, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's things like that. Um, it goes from basics to big, so, and anything in between. So remember that community looks out for each other and you have to have each other's backs because if you don't, then you have a system of people that are just kind of like looking out, uh, um, basically like watching their back from one another and that's not what you want uh you want to reciprocate resources and services so check up on each other so if uh when somebody helps you you know what i'm saying you also want to help them in their time and needs like today for me tomorrow for you or vice versa and uh so you know just like being being humans to one another next slide please Uh, and then this one, it's like a collage of pictures, but let me uh, uh, explain what each of those means. First one, help others where help is needed. Uh, the second and third picks is going to be um, the girl hugging and the, the two boys hugging. I'm sorry if I uh, didn't list the order, but the first one uh, is where you see all the people, all the shadows. That's help others where help is needed. Uh, picks two and three where they're hugging. We all need embracement. And uh, you have to let your people know that you care about them, because if you let them know that you care about them, they'll take care of you as well. Uh, again, reciprocating energy. The one where the girl is running what looks to be a marathon and her friends uh, cheering her on is basically encourage others. When you see someone striving to challenge themselves, encourage that, you know, uh, like don't make nasty remarks or laugh at somebody else's effort or support because progressive change is crucial in life. And how many times have we seen when somebody wants to try something new automatically, oh, that's not gonna work or you can't do that. Um, that's not possible. 
why isn't it possible? You know what I mean? And so it's all it's always about taking that challenge, taking that that stance and and striving to do new things. Again, remember, progressive is is crucial in life. It's crucial. Uh, the two the two people that have the brains going back and forth, that's basically <clears throat> in a group of friends or homies. Uh, everyone comes from different worlds. Everyone comes from different backgrounds, and that's just that's just a fact. Uh, none of us live two of the same lives. We all we might have things in common, but we don't live the same life. But use that to your advantage, because instead of focusing on the differences, you're teaching each other in your differences. For example, um, uh, these two friends know two different things. So with respect to two different subjects and each one of them may have either heard of it or not heard of it, expo uh, been exposed to it or not been exposed to it. So the, the homework here is to share that knowledge with each other, share what you've learned, share what you've experienced because uh, expanding your perspective lets you know the different things in the world and it gives you better understanding. Uh, and then, so yeah, so educate each other on things that you deem important because that's gonna help, that's just gonna help you um, understand each other and understand other people as well. Because just like the song goes, uh, you can't like, how do you know where I've been when you haven't been, no, where do you know where I'm at if you haven't been where I've been, understand where I'm coming from? Because that's like, you can't put yourself in somebody's shoes when you don't know where, uh, where their shoes are. Uh, and then the last picture where you see the dancing, that's Baile Folklorico, that's Mexican folklore dance. Uh, mutual aid can also be expressed through things like art, things like dance, uh, representing your culture and supporting community and people. The audience can sense what you deliver um, when you go on stage and you have, uh, you know, all these things going on. When you put heart into it, people understand what's going on and that basically it, it, it like intertwines with mutual aid because it's supporting ideas through dance through visuals next slide please so going off of what sam said um so like once you expand like your skill sets and whatnot you can do like the next level of mutual aid which can be um block parties or which require a lot of organizing and like you said, like you can do mutual aid through art or it could be through food or it could be through many things. So whatever your interest, like you can elevate and go that extra step, you know. And then another form of mutual aid would be um, community gardens or paint pantries. Um, I know there's some at schools. There's some. Um, I, I haven't heard much about cities, but it looks like in Seattle, they're starting to do those more and more. So just. You know, if you're interested in plants, if you're interested in that, like you can go into that. So you can literally find anything like you're interested in and then just elevate from that. And then let's see. Next slide. Next slide, please. OK. And then. Right. So once you elevate to like the second level, now there's like a third level that you can expand on. Right. So what you can do, let's see. So with mutual aid, you can go on, uh, let's see. Okay, so you can do union strikes. So if you're into that, if you wanna go to the streets right now, if you wanna go to the streets um, and you have all these skill sets and you've talked to all these different people, like you can join these different types of unions, whether they're right, like working unions or they're, um, I'm trying to think, shoot. Um, but yeah, you can do that. And then, oh, tenant union. So the picture in the middle, that was an example of a tenant union here in Washington. And then you can also, you know, give out food to the communities. And then next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, uh, this one, before I say anything, uh, it has to be before you help anyone, before you help anyone else, you have to help yourself. And basically, uh, the order of these pictures is first it's the tree, then the balance, then the little exercise bubbles. Um, the bushes and the heart go uh, hand in hand. And I will start with the trees. So basically, 
you have to teach yourself new skills. You have to teach yourself new ideas and expand your knowledge, education, because uh, education as like, uh, as, as I've heard from, from uh, past and everything like that, from people that I look up to, it's the most lethal of weapons that you can use because you can literally move mountains through a rich vocabulary. And I, uh, you know, the people that I've heard that from is like Tupac, like rappers and things like that. And if, if these people, I think to myself, you know, if these people are, are saying that education is like an essential, in a sense, a weapon, um, because uh, no one can strip you from that. No one can take that from you. People can tell you to be quiet and not say things, but you don't have to do that. You can say whatever you want to say. And if people listen, the thing is that you have to be real. You have to, um, like I said, you have to, um, you have to broaden your ideas, expand the education, and expand your understanding. Uh, and that's basically um, that first picture. Uh, for the second one, the one with the balance, you have to have inner balance. It's very crucial, and I feel like it's some things that are overlooked because a lot of us want to go and we want to help other people. But the thing is, if we don't help ourselves first and we don't find balance within ourselves, getting rid of negative habits, getting rid of negative thinking, getting rid of uh, just like downplay on yourself, because like it can happen to anybody, you know, uh, nobody's immune from that. You have to get it out of you first before you help somebody else. Um, so replace negative habits with positive progressive habits. Um, and then the, the exercise bubble one, this one exercise helps to keep the body healthy and strong, but it also does keep the mind sane because it just, all the frustrations that you get throughout the day, all the things that uh, begin to bottle up, you can use it in a physical sense and you're not harming anybody. Uh, you're, you're basically building on yourself. You, uh, you, you look great and you feel great and you just, you know, you feel a certain type of way. You're, you're putting all your frustrations in a more uh, positive uh, outlet. And um, so basically that's something that's, you know, confidence is a stain that you can't rub off. So that's why exercise is like, it's important to, to move around more than anything, to move around, meditate, yoga, anything that helps you is basically, um, is very crucial. And then the heart and the bushes. So this all ties back to self-love because no one really teaches that self-love is essential, right? It's, it's overlooked. If you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. And I don't mean that in a romantic way. I'm talking about like in a sense of, uh, neighbors, uh, anybody that's like around you, if you don't love yourself, it's gonna come out. If you have self-hatred, it's gonna come out and you're gonna have a, uh, you know, self-hatred on yourself and it's gonna project. Um, so then, you know, take things from the root. Don't cut things at the bush, take it from the root. And that's, uh, that, that's basically where the blackberries come in to play. And next slide, please. Um, oh, sorry. Thank you for that. Um, so basically we're gonna get into direct action real quick. We do have a little bit of time left, but hopefully I'm able to breeze right through it. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, it's an issue when I say that to other people, but honestly, this is probably to me the most effective form of generating political change in my humble opinion. Now, this is not going to, this entire presentation, it's not going to be an A to B. This is not like, oh, if you hit all of these checklists, like you'll have a successful revolution or whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges. Direct action is not pretty. There's a lot of issues, both mentally when you engage in something like that, and also just overall, like how the world reacts to it really too. Um, so Direct action is a public form of strike demonstrations that are usually, but not always, most likely illegal. And I know it's scary for some of you to hear that because all your life you've been told to don't, don't break the rules, follow the rules, and for good reason at times. Uh, but let's also think critically. Has the law always been just and fair to people of color? No, it's never 
not in America. This country was founded on white supremacy. Like, we cannot deny that. That's how it is. But direct action are ways to, like, meet with those in authority, those who are able to make changes and basically apply intense pressure. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, oh, yeah, go on. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I forgot to um, provide some other things. So direct action, when done effectively, can create change. So let's look at Stonewall riots, the LA walkouts, the civil rights movement. And it's important to be educating before engaging in any campaign. We don't want people to aimlessly destroy things because that doesn't do anything. But where do we start, Sam? Okay. Uh, you start with clear goals. Um, basically, community support organize and take action. So important goals, support and action. And goals help resolve an issue or a problem. And then again, who benefits from that action? Uh, and then community support, strengthen numbers, stand in solidarity and in unity. Uh, and then organize and take action. That is basically what is your message in the action. Did you want to add on to that, Carlos? Yeah, no, you got it. Okay. And then uh, risks. Direct action is usually done in contrast to law. So everything that you do against the law, it has its risks. Uh, depending on the activity, there can be serious consequence, consequences. Um, if you're ever found in that situation, don't incriminate yourself. Don't talk to anybody. Reserve uh, the right to remain silent. Um, and then contact your lawyer because they're going to be the ones to help you the best because they understand laws, they know how things roll and things like that. And next slide, please. So real quick, some low level kind of risk of uh, direct action are to give uh, money, food to the homeless. Um, I understand that in Washington state, there's certain agencies that have to check food that you're giving out to the homeless and all that. But at the same time, you know, there's organizations out there that continue to feed those that are like not doing the best in life. You know, um, sometimes we need to give out a helping hand and for some reason it's illegal to help out a neighbor kind of thing. And I get it. There's issues, but at the same time, we need to help them. Um, basically one way that you can like, uh, <clears throat> that you can start doing this is that you need to get food. Uh, where do you get food? Well, if you don't want to buy it, I know for sure that major retailers, not to say that you can give them garbage food, no, but they like retail stores like Walmart, Winco, all those Whole Foods throw out perfectly good food, perfectly good food. And there's videos online where you see meats and vegetables that are still good that could be given out to people in need. Um, you could also like cook up some like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, some hand sanitizer, something. You don't have to buy these things. These are people in need. There's people that are dying. We can help them out in like a minimal risky kind of thing. Uh, next slide, please. Also, I'm loving the chat boxes. I do read everything. Um, if y'all have anything else that you all want to add, please feel free to type it out and go crazy. Uh, but yeah, the second one is sit-ins and walkouts. This is popular among students because it obviously just it brings them to like, let's say the principal is doing some shady stuff and you've gone through all the process. You talk to your counselor, you submitted complaints and they're still not doing something about that person. Why don't you just get your group of people, like 500 students or so crammed into his office, sit there and don't move until he tells you like, until like your demands are met. Or like if a teacher was being racist to a student, which this has happened in multiple schools across Seattle, uh, or not Seattle, but like across the country in which like students got up and walked out of their classroom, no organization needed, no nothing. They're just like, we had it. We're just not going to sit here and take it. We're going to go home. That's how you do it. You take away that power. They're like, don't do that. Or you'll get suspended or you'll get expelled. You'll get this and that. You'll take this scholarship away or whatever. Like, it's like, you can do it to one person, but can you do it to 500? And it's also, it kind of goes with the quote of Martin Luther King, where it's like, man that's something along the lines of a man willing to risk their prestige their position everything else to lift a man to another man to a more honorable more noble way of life that what makes you a hero kind of thing so it's always about sticking with people it's about 
this is where the mutual aid comes in and like all the direct action is coming together is when you stick together, your power is immense compared to like two, three people burning stuff down. It's a much more powerful message when you see a bunch of students saying, we're not going to tolerate this. So, yeah. Oh, Next God, slide, that oh one yeah. quick example to that. Yeah. Uh, one quick example, actually recently, I think it was last week, my uh, sister's high school, there was, um, I'm not too familiar with the subject, but there was a harassment thing going on from mm -hmm. st students. Jackson and, High School, yeah. You heard about that? Yeah. Yeah, and they walked out. And uh, so the, the, the high school was basically like, nothing's going on. The protests are just a bunch of crazy kids. Uh, I think like six cops showed up to the school because apparently like a fight broke out or something. But um, that's not really what it's for. Like I've seen multiple, we, we've all seen multiple things where the cops show up and it's not because there's a fight. It's because they're thinking like there's too many students. Something's going to go wrong. Um, so basically... The thing is that schools need to understand that it's not about their prestige. It's not about their sports. If kids are getting harassed, something needs to be done. It's not like Carlos said, you, you have sometimes you have to give up your image in order to fix your internal problems rather than try to cover them up. Yeah, thank you. Um, the next slide, please. So, and then the last one, the big one, we all saw what happened in the summer during the, uh, the riots. I think that was two years ago now. Time flies by. That's crazy. But basically, it's when an entire city meets up a tiny line of police and they're just at a standoff. Like, that's not necessarily my favorite thing to do. But at the same time, it shows you your power. Like, come on. That thin blue line is what's standing in the way between you and change. And they could either get with the change or they could be the resistance to it. Uh, abolishing ICE, there are certain agencies that are just not legitimate that we shouldn't be following their orders. Uh, we received uh, training on what to do when we were detained by ICE. And basically, I know what to look for. Um, you don't have to respect these institutions. They are violent. Police, ICE, government, federal agents, they're all state-sponsored gang members in a sense. They just hide behind police and these high morality things because they, in a way, uphold certain system, si certain systems that, you know, yes, are there to protect us, but at the same time, they benefit people in power um, without diving too much into leftist theory, but capitalism and like state violence plays a huge role in every major issue, everything from why kids are receiving poor education to like why we're interfering in uh, Latin American countries. It all stems to like violence and money, greed. So yeah, um, the next slide, please. Uh, so basically all in all direct action, here's basically the layout. Like I said, this is not a checklist. There's problems, there's issues, there's barriers that you have to overcome before any change can be seen really. Um, first is identifying the problem and the people around you, your group, your mutual aid, they have to agree on a solution on how to get there. We develop a strategy. Uh, that's the overall plan for campaign. Are we gonna take it to the streets every night? Are we gonna be walking out during this time? What is the game plan? What is the campaign? Uh, and then when you have that campaign, you bring a lot of people, you bring your homies, you bring your mutual aid, and you use large meetings and action to force the person in charge the way you want, like to give you what you want. Basically to tell them, here's what we want. The ball is in your court now. And that's in a sense what direct action is supposed to be. Um, I think for the most part, this is, this contains a lot of risks. I don't want to tell people to go out in the streets and protest because it's sometimes just pointless. There's nothing being generated oftentimes it's better to just work within your communities and help them and build political power through like local elections, PTA, hell, if there's students in here who are graduating, running for school board, like you have no idea how much power you can get and how much change you can make through school board. Um, it does require a lot of support. I had a student or not a student, but I knew a student who was, who graduated high school, ran for school board, got pretty far, but unfortunately didn't make it. But still like the fact that they have that experience and the fact that they had that support could show you what you could do in the future um yeah next slide please 
And just real quick, uh, ways to get involved. Um, check out clubs at your schools, whether it's high school, college, check out Mecha. Mecha is pretty, um, it's across the state, across the country, really. And then check out nonprofits, El Centro de la Raza, um, Latino Community Fund. You can check out the United Farm Workers. Um, basically, just find, I guess, what um, you're interested, find an, maybe an organization, a club, and then from there, they'll, um, they'll point you to the right people. And then unions, un, um, trade unions, right? Um, worker unions, tenant unions, community centers, the YMCA. You, um, I know at my uh, Washington Wazoo, we have the Chicano, the Chicanx Latinx Student Center, and that's where I met a lot of people and had these conversations with. So just finding like a space where you can have these conversations, like that's a great way to get involved. And then um, another one I wanted to talk about was hand in hand, which is in Everett, where um, I know I have like many little cousins that play soccer with them, but they're pretty involved with the com community. So just keeping an eye out for organizations like that. And then next, please. So in the end, like Edwin said, action without, or theory without practice or practice without theory is more or less useless, or at least that's what Fred Hampton said. Not exactly those words, but the overall theme is there. Theory without practice, practice without theory is pretty useless. Similar to just protesting, just voting, just doing this, it doesn't do much. It doesn't do the damage you think it does. But when you diversify, like let's say I'm over here, I'm talking to my homies on campus and I'm telling them, hey, let's organize, let's Let's hang out. And then on the other side, I'm over here throwing little parties at my house, telling people, hey, come through, you know, we'll just sit here, talk, maybe watch a movie. And it's like a very political movie or like a documentary. And we're just there chilling. And then I also volunteer my time and help my community, help the young ones out, because in the end, they're our future, not us. It's the kids that are our future. They're the ones that are going to be changing the world. Um, and honestly, the change will be seen through them because of how we raise them kind of thing. Uh, I can't vote. I hate voting. I hate anything to do with voter registration. I'm undocumented. So that's why I strongly hate voting. Also, because it's a bureaucratic system. It doesn't work. I've talked to representatives. I help people register to vote. Not my favorite, but I still do it. And that's the thing. We have to be diversified in our engagement. That's the overall thing here. Um, yeah, next slide. Unless any of you have anything to add? Cool. Questions, comments, concerns? I don't think we have time, but I guess. Just want to thank you, good folks, for putting together this amazing panel um, and discussion on mutual aid. And I'm wondering if we're going to get cut off here soon, right? Isn't it supposed to, are we heading back into the main yeah. hall? Yeah, we're supposed to head back into the main hall, but I just want to leave at least another minute or so if there's any reflections anyone else wants to share. I think for me personally, that was such a powerful presentation. Um I just want to thank the three of you so much for, for sharing this with, with all of us. Um, and yeah, I'll leave another, another minute or so for anyone else who wants to share anything before we go back in the main session. I'll put Thanks, that No, I, I just want to thank you so much, Sam, Alicia and Carlos. It was such a, a great uh, breakdown and deconstruction of what mutual aid is and, um, and uh, I'm somebody that uh, got more radicalized and I'm 49 now, but during the Occupy Wall Street movement, and I've been involved in every movement um, ever since then, uh, be it from Ferguson, um, you know, rebellion, Baltimore uprising, um, and then, of course, the George Floyd rebellion that happened last year. But just really appreciate the information. And it's great to see it. Um, being brought to the public because so many people that are not politically active, especially adults, don't understand what mutual aid is. They, re they really don't understand it. They also don't get the context, the political context of it being, you know, if I stand in solidarity and I show up, right, it means that um, there's that piece to it that I'm also admitting that um, this is unjust, right? There's a need in the community for mutual aid because shit is unjust, so really important to do that um, and really respect all three of your very unique experiences, life paths, and interactions with mutual aid. You have a lot to teach people, and I really appreciate it. It's a privilege.
Thank you. Um, someone said if they could get our contact information. Yes, I will drop my email if you need to. Um, I don't know if y'all want to drop your emails too or like Instagram handles. I don't know what's the etiquette. We're not a professional organization. We're we're grassroots. We're grassroots organ, something like that. But yeah, um, thank y'all so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Um, and yeah.